And I'm about to get into the two ideas I had. One being John's idea he had on my first live stream of this. And a second being idea I originally had for my novel. So I'll do, I have theme two and theme one. And I just wrote those in to, uh, I copy and pasted my story and had the two ideas. So the first idea, or what I call theme one, really I should change that to idea one. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I don't know why I said theme one. Let me change that. That's... I didn't really think about that till I read that out loud. Anyway, so the idea one is essentially what I wrote would stay fully intact, even the end, as I'll slowly scroll down to the end here. And if you're interested in hearing my story, you can go to my first live stream called Writer's Block and has a pen to paper uh, thumbnail um, in the... Uh, in my in my uh it has a pen to paper thumbnail and you can find it in my videos uh for my in my YouTube channel obviously. <laughs> Whew, I don't know why that was so hard to say or think. Anyway, so my first idea is keeping the ten pages I wrote fully, maybe adding to them a little bit, but having that as my prologue. And this was John's idea. So keeping like I said, keeping it intact and having it as a prologue, maybe adding something uh, but not completely certain and then keep starting off my novel with a different idea or a different or starting off my novel with something different as obviously it's a prologue it's not the continuation of the story right into chapter chapter one uh, if that makes any sense it makes sense in my head but I'm not sure I explained it uh, super well, but those what know what a prologue is or have experience in reading, uh, books kind of know what I'm what I'm trying to say, even though I can't really say. It. So I would start it off with chapter one and not continuing the story, uh, through the prologue. Anyway, so I was trying to think where I should start it. As obviously, if I were to do this prologue version and kill Page Vetus, he no longer exists. He's dead. He's gone. He's over. So he's no longer a character I can play around with, which is fine. I'm okay with that. It's it's actually would be a really really good prologue because I'm very happy with the story I wrote and with that being a prologue. So I'm like I was thinking, where should I start? this novel and I decided well Catherine is now going to be the main character or at least one of the main characters in my story so how can I introduce Catherine after the prologue because in the prologue she seems very evil and really she might be the villain of the story and I'm kind of leaning that direction as I've already said I kind of want her to be a little finger like character or some people could think that she's doing her motivations are good and her motivations are just and her motivations are strong. Whatever catchy word you want to use for something good. Others might take the same thing you read and think that those motivations are something that is wrong and something you shouldn't do. So I want her to be a very gray area character. Um, and that's important. So I decided that... I would start it off in the Unknown Empire. And so obviously I would have to give that empire a name. I don't want to just keep calling it the Unknown Empire. And I haven't thought of a name yet. But it's something I would need to do if I decide to keep on with Idea 1. <clears throat> I'm just going to read what I have written with my two uh, sentences. And those... Th My first pages uh, in my story, my first 10 pages in my story were extremely detailed and used a lot of adjectives and a lot of interest words. I'm not sure exactly what you want to call it, but it was very intense read and very interesting. And that took me a while to do, and I'm very proud of it, as I've already said. So... Mo these sentences, although they're kind of vague, I'm going to have to go back and change them to add that same word tone into it, 
but I kind of wanted to just put a sentence down to get my mind going, and this is what I had. The summer sunrise hits the northeast castle wall, casting an ominous shadow even the greatest enemy would be afraid of. The poor and the wise were the only ones awake, although they lived very different lives. So that's what I had for my first two sentences so far. And as I've said, I wanted to get more done, but unfortunately, I couldn't really think of ideas, and I just decided... Why go ahead and write a sentence? Go ahead and just see if you you can get your mind going and just kind of think. Just write. Don't worry about putting in all these adjectives. Don't worry about all of these other things. You can come back and do that, and that's something I want to come back and do. So that's what I did, and I was able to kind of think of those two sentences, and then I'm like, okay, let's think about what I want to include in the rest of the chapter before I just keep writing. And make the story not really connect with each other. Because you have to think about these things even in the first chapter or, or and all these other things. Because if you don't, your book is going to seem very not jointed and, and kind of confusing. So I decide that my next steps to kind of bringing, brainstorming my first idea and my first chapter would be this. First off... I want to describe the poor. As I just mentioned, the poor and the wise were the only ones awake. So I want to mention the poor and kind of describe what being poor was like in that unknown empire. Excuse me. Mm -mm. So I want to describe what their living situation was like. And I also want to describe what the poor were doing because they were awake. So what were they doing? And then I want to compare that to the rich and to the wealthy lifestyle style style of that empire. Um, and then I want to mention Catherine, who would be the main character or one of the main characters of the name. But I don't want her to be shown in the story yet. So in other words, I want to mention her by name, but not have her in the story yet. That's how I first want to introduce Catherine after the prologue. I want her to kind of be that character that people know about and they don't know what to think of her or they feel like they have her down and they know who she is and what she is but they don't exactly but they're wrong and then I want to introduce Sir William and Sir Jester and I put under that head of Queen's Guard to remind me just in case uh, and not confuse the two with Sir William being the head of the Queen's Guard I want to include an example within there where he comes across as very demanding and knows what he wants and leading his soldiers, maybe having them uh, train or something within that as an example to beef up uh, the strategy or to beef up that character as being someone who's very strong and strong minded and has it's his way or the highway type of attitude. Then I have Sir Jester talks with soldiers for next defense plan. So I mentioned in my uh, character uh, tab of my campfire program what I showed you first. And I'm not sure if I read it or if I read it in my first stream. Because as I mentioned, uh, my first stream had some technical problems due to being outside. My first stream today, not the first overall stream. Uh, anyway. So, I'll say it again. Basically, Sir Jester uh, is only mentioned to, uh, by name uh, in the prologue or in chapter 1, depending on which idea. But, let's use the terminology for this idea. In the prologue. And I want to first introduce him as that person who's making a defense plan or acting on the defense plan he's made. Because that's what his role is. And I want him to kind of be shown strongly in that role at first. I kind of want you to leave this empire after chapter 1. Or think of this empire after reading chapter 1. And saying they kind of know what they're doing uh, as, as a place. And then I want to introduce Catherine fully in the story. Uh, by like having her speak and having her actions. And first thing I want to have her do and have, have, have the reader see her do, if that makes sense, is having her walk through the dungeons. And I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with this, but I kind of want to create 
a ominous tone from within her introduction again. Although you already get that from the prologue, I feel like that would be a, a way to continue Catherine's tone for the story through her first introduction. Because why would she be walking through the dungeons? Why? What is her motive? What is, exactly is she doing? And that questions are what I want the reader to leave with in chapter one. You, she, you know she has a plan, but you don't know what her plan is yet. That's kind of what I have so far for my idea one, or chapter one. And my running title for chapter one so far is 375 AD, The Darkness Continues. So 375 AD is when the fall of the Roman Empire occurred. Obviously, that's a whole year, not the exact month. But you kind of get what I'm going with here. And it's to introduce the new empire or the unknown empire from the story and not the Roman Empire right away. And I might add dates for every chapter like say 376 AD blank 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 or 380 AD blank blank blank. But I'm not sure if that's going to be something I'm going to do or not because it's still kind of early on. But I felt like I needed it for the first chapter to set the tone of the story again. Just to make sure that the reader and the audience knows what's going on. I don't want to pound it in over and over and over to the point where the audience goes, I get it, I know, I know. But I still want them to understand uh, where it's being set even in chapter one. So I'm interested to see what John or if Ed's still here or if anyone else who's watching thinks of that first idea or what I plan to do to continue my story, especially if you listen to my first uh, live stream of this novel series where I read out all of the 10 pages. But that's kind of what I was thinking for chapter one of this idea and the first introduction to the story besides the prologue. But I obviously have theme two or idea two and I'm going to change that to idea. Alrighty. So obviously idea two continues on the story. So instead of the story I read and uh, the first stream uh, ending and being a prologue, I continue the story and have it as a chapter. So, that is my idea too. So, I was trying to think, well, where do I want to go with this idea if I were to continue the story? But first, I had to figure out how I was going to change that last paragraph in order to not have him die. Because obviously when I wrote, or not obvious, well, anyway, when I wrote the horse story, I wanted it to end with a death. But this isn't a horse story anymore. Although I could have components of horror from within my story. So what I decided to do was this. Uh, and I think I'm going to change it a little bit and add some more adjectives and some more language. Because the way I write is I, I'll write real simple sentence and then I'll come back and change it and make it a little bit better. And then I'll come back and look at it again and really add those adjectives and beef up the sentence. So it takes me a couple of times to write the language of the story and how I want it to sound and how I want it to be. Because my idea doesn't just come up right away. The adjective doesn't just go whoop, there it is, whoop, here, add. It takes me a little bit of time. So... Right here, it has, she plunges the dagger into his chest as it penetrates the blessed plate from where it lay. Catherine quickly pressed her fingers over my grimacing face. So I have it end that part of the paragraph that way. And I was trying to think before I started this stream and to add, add some sentences. And I was just getting kind of stuck to kind of decide what I wanted to do and how the chapter would continue. So like I mentioned in the first idea, I'm like, okay, let me plan out the rest of the chapter and let's figure out how to attach the web from what that is to the chapter, uh, what, what, what I have. So it's kind of similar to the idea one a little bit, but 
it's a little different because it's a different idea. I, I mean, obviously, uh, I keep saying obviously now. Anyway, so for this idea, I have Catherine go to the poor of the city. So I'm okay. Go to the poor of the city. Have Catherine search for a vulnerable boy. So essentially, my idea of this was either having her or one of her henchmen, if she does have henchmen, um, go into the poor area of the city or of the castle and search for a vulnerable boy. If I have Catherine do it, which I might do, and I think I'm going to do, because they don't really see her as having henchmen. Littlefinger in Game of Thrones had this horse uh, and, and prostitutes essentially as his spies and his henchmen uh, in Game of Thrones. I plan to do something similar with Catherine, but not really in that way. Uh, and I don't really want her to have henchmen like soldiers. You know, that's kind of cliche in my opinion. So I'm not really sure what her henchmen will be. But I kind of don't want her to be a loner character as well. So as of now in my idea, I plan to have Catherine do the search. But that might change uh, when I start putting pen to paper uh, with writing this chapter. So have Catherine search for a vulnerable boy. Pay him slash his family for silence. Bring him to the castle and prepare. And what I mean by prepare, prepare is what I plan on doing with the rest of the chapter is essentially have this boy who looks similar to to uh, Page Fetus be Page Fetus and he ends up getting killed by Catherine instead of Page Fetus. And then Catherine later plans to escape with Page Fetus so Page Fetus leaves that unknown empire uh, but Catherine still killed the boy, and that's how I plan to kind of keep her gray. Although she frees the main character of the story, she killed a poor person in place of that character. And I felt like it was a good way to kind of keep her character in a gray area where you're not really sure if she's good or if she's bad. So that's kind of the running idea I had, and that's why I kind of searched burial rites. Uh, our barrier customs in the medieval times so that I could continue um, the idea and have him die and get buried like uh, Page Vetus would have been uh, but it wasn't Page Vetus and it was just some random poor boy who got paid uh, to die essentially so those are the two ideas I had and as I added in the description, or at least it should be in the description, or if you're watching now, I was wondering, just out of curiosity, which idea you kind of liked better. Not that I'm necessarily going to go with it fully, because like I mentioned in my first stream, I plan to write each idea out fully and kind of see which one I like better. Uh, I don't plan to keep writing two stories, because that's a lot to write two whole novels with two different ideas. Uh, that's not exactly what I'm doing, but I do want to see which idea turns into the better story and which makes more sense and is more compelling to read. So I was wondering which idea you kind of liked better. They are similar in some ways because I kind of have a overlying plot in the book and in the story and what I want to have in it. Uh, throughout both ideas because again, I do have a idea of the book as as the whole as the the picture um and not just as pieces of the picture like it seems like i might have uh because it is in a very early stage of uh the process